Well, there it is. I've written to them about the refrigerator. It was the only thing left to do. Really, you wouldn't believe that an ordinary, everyday thing like a refrigerator could become such an annoyance. Of course, our refrigerator isn't ordinary. You can't call something ordinary that's been standing in your kitchen for 20 years. 20 years. I remember when Arthur and the children surprised me with it. I was so thrilled. But that was 20 years ago. The children are off and married. I'm a grandmother. And there's the refrigerator, still standing there. Now I ask you. But then you don't know my husband, Arthur. You'd think he'd be tired of seeing the same refrigerator for 20 years. But no, he says. Why should I be tired of it? I didn't get tired of you in more than 20 years. After all, what's wrong with it, he says. It works like a charm. But that's the point. There's nothing wrong with it. There's been nothing wrong with it for 20 years. I'm tired of it. Now you're talking like a woman, he says. Why, this refrigerator never cost us a penny in repairs. It just goes on and on. I believe in keeping things while they last. Well, Arthur, you're right about one thing. That refrigerator does just go on and on and on. Oh, I wish I could say a magic word and poof, make it disappear. But I don't think words could do it. Then one morning, Arthur said, Honey, I'll be home early today and I'll have a surprise for you. Well, you can imagine how I felt. I spent the day picturing my new refrigerator. It would have beautiful styling, roll-out shelves, a real freezer, and joy of joys, completely frost-proof. Space on the door for everything, and everything in its own tidy place. Ah, yes, I had visions. Later that day, Arthur came in beaming. Come on outside, he says. It's here. Well, it was here, but it wasn't a refrigerator. Oh, it was beautiful, but we didn't need a car. I wanted a refrigerator. There was just one thing to do. Arthur was anxious to go for a little ride and try out the car, so I decided it was his turn to get a little surprise. Naturally, Arthur kept making up arguments. Then he tangled with the dealer. He said, the real trouble is, they just aren't making appliances the way they used to. Well, the dealer was just wonderful. He started by agreeing with Arthur. He said, Arthur was right. They don't make appliances the way they used to. They make them better. He said, people actually don't realize how much things have changed. Why, to get a new design for an appliance approved for production, the engineers have to make models and put them through a tremendous series of rugged tests. He told us, this is one of the ways they build reliability into our appliances, even before they're produced. He said, the same kind of scientific precision goes into making every single part. The compressor for refrigerators, for instance. They check the parts with special gauges, accurate to millionths of an inch. Crated products are pulled at random from the warehouse and bumped and jolted on a machine to make sure they can stand long, hard travel. Then tested again with a critical eye. Refrigerators are tested for reliable operation under the most extreme conditions of heat and humidity. All appliances have to pass more than 100 proving tests. And these tests are tough. Every appliance has to get an A to pass. You take washers, for instance. They have to live through an endurance grind like a marathon, a test that simulates 15 years of ordinary household operation. And that's an acid test if I ever heard of one. He said he could go on for hours, but it all adds up to this. They sure don't make them like they used to they make them better. Well, it was plain to see that Arthur was impressed. He wasn't ready to give in yet, but he said he'd think about it. 
Weeks later, he was still thinking about it, and the old refrigerator still stood there. It was time for desperation measures. I called in Mr. Zilke down the street. He's a mechanical genius. Now, he didn't know how to do what I wanted done. I called in the appliance dealer and asked him how to do it. He didn't know. So, I've written the letter to the people who made the refrigerator, and I've asked them. Dear sirs, please help me. I have one of your refrigerators that's been running perfectly for 20 years. I want a new one, so how can I make this one quit working without my husband catching on that I did something to it? But gee, maybe they won't tell me. Can anyone out there help me? Please? 